Yeah. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, just want to make sure everyone's in the right workshop. This is the Getting Started with LDK Nerd workshop. Give me some thumbs up. Very good. Um, okay, so my name's Connor. Um, this is my friend Jeff. Um, we're going to be going through something called um, the LDK Node uh, workshop today. Um, I'm a product manager, just for a little bit about, um, to talk a little bit about Spiral. I'm a product manager at Spiral. Spiral is an initiative within Block that funds open source um, development. So we've currently funded over the, over the last two and a half, three years, we funded up to 70 grants. So we've got developers, designers, and product managers working across the whole Bitcoin ecosystem on Bitcoin, on Lightning, um, merchant solution, SDKs, um, privacy preserving solutions and design focused efforts as well. Um, and Jeff, do you want to talk a bit about what you do? Yeah, so I'm also at Spiral, I'm a developer. I work on the Lightning Development Kit here, and I'll be helping Connor out along the way. So, uh, look forward to it. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, who's here has heard of the Lightning Development Kit? Can I get some hands? A lot of people. A lot of people, so pretty much, pretty much everyone. Um, and just for myself, just to get a feel for the for who's participating, who's like a developer, hands up. Okay. Des designer. On, on <laughs> uh, one of them. Product manager, PM, researcher. Cool. All right, cool. So we've got a nice, got a nice mix going on. So, you, so you've all heard of the Lightning Development Kit. kit. So it's an awesome low-level Lightning library, um, highly customizable, very powerful and includes language finding support. So what that means is the core library is written in Rust, um, but you don't necessarily have to be a Rust developer to use the Lightning Development Kit. If you're an Android developer, we provide bindings in Kotlin, so you can write natively in Kotlin. Or if you develop for iOS, um, you can also develop in Swift. Um, we also have Java bindings as well, as, and C, I think, as well. Yeah, C, C is kind of like the bridge to the other yeah. language, essentially. But yeah. Exactly, um, and, and it differs slightly from the other Lightning implementations in that it is an SDK, so it doesn't come as a kind of uh, node out of the box, let's say its own like binary. It is a tool and an SDK that you use to build your, build your own uh, node, essentially. Um, we've got here, it's got great documentation. It has, at the API level, with the, the, the SDK is constantly changing and we're always trying to keep it up to date as well. So. Um, so, so that's that. So uh, a bit more about the Lightning Development Kit. So it essentially takes quite a lot to configure. Some of the kind of objects that we've kind of outlined here are stuff like channel managers and channel monitors and keys manager keys managers to do your, your key management, um, interfacing with different peers across the network. Um, so th th there is a lot to get your head around, like routing and scoring, and you have to configure these objects in a, in a number of different ways. Um, you also, LDK doesn't come with its own on-chain uh, wallet as well. So you have this concept of like bring your own, bring your own wallet. So you can kind of just kind of plug and play. Um, and there are over kind of public interfaces. There are over like 900 methods. What users actually interface with is, is probably, well, it is a lot less. Um, but in general, it's quite a large and, and BP library. You want to add any to that? I just wanted to point out, I guess, is the persistence aspect. It's a very important part of Lightning. Yep. So being able to persist channel state and recover, um, yeah, so that's uh, a large part of LDK. Yeah, so in, in, in general, it does require a lot of um, Lightning knowledge, a lot of knowledge of how to put together all of the pieces in the Lightning Development Kit. Um, so it's not exactly trivial at this point to get up and running with, uh, with building your own node. Can I quickly interrupt you? So, yeah. Is it okay to ask questions? Pleasure? Yeah, go for it. Why not? Yeah. Give me some examples of applications built using LDK. Because so I'm going to understand the use case, the real world use cases. Give me examples of applications built using the LDK so I can understand the real world use cases. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so, there are a few. So, um, LDK is you can build your own just node out of, out of the box. So, you can have like a, a node running in, in, a, in a server based environment. Um, so, you could build something similar to an an LND or a core Lightning, even though LDK is a Lightning node implementation in its own right, you could build your own node and have it customized to suit your use cases. So there's that. Um, but we think like the sweet spot is the fact that 
um, LDK is designed to be embedded into your application directly. Um, so if you're building a native um, Android application or a native Swift application, or we have people who have um, used React Native, so used um, our Android, our Kotlin and, and Swift bindings to build React Native bindings, um, they're able to embed the library directly into the application. So it's something that sits at the application level as opposed to a binary that you can um, just run, essentially. Um, so this, up, this opens up new cases such as like mobile app development, or you can run LDK in embedded devices as well. Um, so we've had um, some examples of applications that are moving close to production, so such as Blue Wallet. Blue Wallet have um, an LDK implementation implementation over the last maybe 18 months or so behind it's currently behind an easter egg but they have been playing with it quite significantly um, synonym are using it for their um, mobile wallet as well um, obviously cash up use it in a slightly different way um, and mutiny wallet. wallet are using it as a, as a web browser based wallet as well I think we have a, a GitHub discussion link. That yeah, shows so it's like everyone that's kind of using it that we know of right now. So we get the link to you and see what. Yeah, so if you go over to our, our lightningdevkit.org GitHub repo, there's a discussion called Who's Using LDK and a long thread of all of the projects that are using it. Um, so it does vary quite a bit. And then there we have VLS, which is like for remote lightning signers. So um, instances where you want to separate the the keys you use to sign the transaction and the lightning state machine essentially. So um, does that does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. So when it comes to the reference implementation of lightning itself, right? Is this a reference implementation? Or so, is it, uh, so, so this is, is an implementation of the lightning well, network the protocols, not the reference implementation. So you could think of um, at one point I think core lightning was referring to itself as like the core or the reference implementation. But at this point, there are at least four major implementations that coordinate on the spec. And in order for a, a spec change to be merged into the Volt's specification, uh, it requires two of those implementations to interoperate. So there really isn't a reference implementation, if you will, these days. But Lightning's kind of built in a way where um, you know it's extensible of different features, and you don't have to actually necessarily implement all of them. But there is a sort of core functionality, uh, which you know, the Volt's are sort of describing. Um, now there's this concept of blips, which are kind of like, uh, I don't know what stands for, but it's essentially, um, it depends on who you asked what, what they exactly are, but they can be like um, either best practices or, or uh, new features and, and different things that are kind of, um, I guess, at some point maybe become part of the specification or might be just kind of separate, um, but uh, things that are used. I, I kind of like the name Sparks, because it seems like another play on the word of letting it bolt, but the blips was taken. Um, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so like I described, it is a bit of a, a heavy lift to get started with LDK at the moment. So, um, we've been working on something called LDK Node, um, which is a, um, which uses LDK under the hood, but provides a much smaller public interface for you to get up and running with, with and provide some uh, sensible defaults out of the box. And it's, ultimately designed for um, a mobile use case. So um, it's been stripped right down to around 15 or so methods, um, which make it very simple for you to, to get up and running essentially. And similarly to LDK, um, we are gonna be having binding support as well. Currently we just released our, our alpha, um, we did the alpha release for LDK node uh, this week, actually beginning of this week, um, but we're still kind of experimenting with Kotlin and Swift, and then there are there are some sample projects which I can probably share with people a bit later, or people who have kind of um, started generating bindings for Kotlin and Swift. Um, but the goal is to also have Python and Flutter as well. Um, yeah, so it's it's written natively in Rust, yeah. just like LDK, and uh, I believe that in the Replit there. Either the replica or maybe the GitHub, but I forget which one, but it has a, a link to um, that alpha releases documentation and mm -hmm. everything. So you have yeah, a reference today. Yeah. Exactly. Um, 
and uh, we do plan to add a level of configurability into LDK node, even though it's providing a lot of these sensible defaults, um, you will be able to kind of switch between how you retrieve gossip data, um, whether it be like peer-to-peer -peer gossip sync or something called um, rapid gossip sync, which kind of um, puts all of that on, onto a server, um, which, you can, uh, which you can pull in that way. Um, there's also some configurations around like chain data as well. So you can source chain data from like a Bitcoin Core RPC or Explorer or Electrum. And then um, how you provide entropy to your on-chain wallet can be done in a number of various different ways as well. Um, there is a Summer of Bitcoin project going on. Um, I think uh, the plan is to announce them next week actually but there is going to be um, a, a client implementation for LSP integration um, does do people know what an LSP is uh, yeah well, who doesn't know what an LSP is yeah. or a few people don't mm -hmm. so uh, about what so, yeah there is a talk on the, oh um, Nick Slane is doing a talk at some point yeah and I, I think it's actually said too so if you happen to be uh, you get through the, the workshop quick, quick, quickly um, you can jump over that because I, I don't think everyone here will need the full two hours so you yeah. definitely get done a lot quicker um, but we'll be here to help out mm -hmm. um, but just kind of summary LSP's uh, lighting service provider or sometimes you may refer to it as a um, uh, I can't remember another name for the S, but, but essentially the idea is you're providing oh, or it could be liquidity service provider maybe for yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so typically liquidity uh, you know having um, inbound liquidity will be the most important part for so like for a mobile wallet um, if, if you want to get paid at all, um, say your sister, you want a friend, want to pay you, you need to channel the liquidity on uh, the opposite side. Um, so an LSP is a way to do that. And also it, it would help with managing when you're offline. So if it's a mobile application, you might have to just, um, you know, maybe you're in airplane mode or, or maybe you're, um, you just don't have the CPU for the process and be able to receive payments. So LSP can just help you out with that. So I had uh, Nick Slaney's talk at two will, will be useful for that. Um, Exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, so we have a GitHub, what's it called? So I think at this point we're going to switch over to Replit anyway. Um, we did do a previous iteration of this workshop and uh, we got people to use their own code editors and stuff. Um, but are people able to, uh, this is my first time doing this whole Replit stuff and it does seem like it's quite a good setup, but have, can people view the, um, the Replit for this workshop? people able to do it yet yeah. so uh, the first thing I think I want you to do is so people are not coding in the same replica is to fork it does everyone know how to, to do that does it by default usually does it do it by default I, I think if you're a yeah. speaker you might have to explicitly do it but otherwise uh, yeah, you should be yeah. okay, it didn't fork. it didn't fork mine oh well I I was, yeah, yeah it yeah. must be it you also if you fork it make sure you select an owner, and by default, it'll have the team select as the owner, but you need to select your personal account. Yeah, I think it's for right, so I think, uh, let me try and do it now. So I think if I click fork here. Yeah, owner. I'm not the board, so I'm going to just check my profile. Fork. I'm also pretty early here with Replit, so bear, bear with us. If it's fine. Um, so we'll be able to help you. Uh, Ark and Audi's here will love help as well, but with any questions you have along the way, um, and uh, even if it's just like rough stuff, like you have this compilation or anything like that. Okay, so let's see here. So that seems like it's all good. I'll close this window for a second. Um, yeah. All right, let me get the readme up as well. Um, Is a LDK node different from the LDK sample that was out there? Yeah, yeah. The LDK sample was sort of a, an attempt to to write a binary that wasn't really production worthy. Um, with LDK, mm -hmm. this is an example of, of how to use it. Um, LDK node is is taking. I mean, it's somewhat a similar approach, but it, it's more um, thinking a little bit more about how user interfaces with it. Uh, so there's a different event mechanism that's exposed. Um, and then uh, different methods that allow you to like get this payments, etc. Um, so it is sort of like the 
precursor or the, I guess, the predecessor, rather, uh, of, of the Nike Instant Sample. And then there's also Sensei. Yeah, so Sensei is an independent implementation okay. of LDK, or of, an L, okay. of a Lightning node using LDK. Right. John Cantrell worked yeah. on that. Um, and it's, it's quite r r robust, actually. It's a okay. nice UI and everything. Okay. Okay, so um, is everyone able to, to fork the repo so far? Uh, how do you fork the repo? Um, so I think if you click this uh, tab at the top and these three dots, you can fork it that way, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's not so an option. I don't um, do an option either. If you're not a speaker, you don't worry about it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can I download like a Git repo or something? Yeah. That might be easier. Well, no, no, you should you should be able to just. Dude, uh, are you a speaker? No, you don't need port. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Just, 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 just by just by opening it, you port it. Gotcha. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. You're you're free to also use just your own setup. You don't have to use um, Replit because um, it's pretty much self-contained in yeah. the um, the GitHub repository. The one issue you may, you may run across is that with the, the poor Wi-Fi and you're trying to connect to the Crates.io to build, like it might just take a long time, so just be aware. I think it's only like a one-time cost though. Front. Okay, does everyone have the, the rep kit in front of them? Yeah, yeah all good, yeah. cool. All right, so um, what we're gonna do today is um, basically we have an invoice payment challenge. So we're gonna see who is the quickest to pay a Lightning invoice. Um, does, sorry, does that compile right now, or do we have to? Yeah, it won't compile. There, okay, there it won't compile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you have to do some work today. We, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you might just want to open a console though and, and um, do a cargo build so you get the code suggestion. Yeah, I think if you hit run on top, it might actually oh, yeah, do it. Good. But it'll actually run. You may, no. If you don't want to run it right away, maybe cargo build is better on Yeah, let me do a cargo build. So. Or even cargo check is a little quicker, but it won't build the back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, do a, do a cargo check. It's just so you can get the um, uh, the code completion. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, cool. All right, let's see how we go here. So yeah, so we've got an invoice payment challenge. Um, the idea is that you're going to be provided with the docs, the, the Rust documentation. Who who has uh, written in Rust before? Okay, we've got a few people. So Rust shouldn't be shouldn't be a barrier for this workshop. It, it is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of um, putting things together. So we do have a faucet running in reg test mode, um, just under the reg test URLs you can see here. So if you click on it, you have some. I mean, maybe that looks smaller. Um, you have some endpoints you can hit. So. Um, we're going to go through the steps required to get to a point where you can pay an invoice. That includes funding a um, funding address. That includes um, connecting and opening a Lightning channel, and then eventually paying an invoice. Um, your invoices are going to be uniquely generated, and on your table you should see a piece of paper with passphrases on it, yeah? So um, when when I tell you to start, what you're gonna do is hit this endpoint and just pick a passphrase from that sheet of paper. You can cross it off after if you want, but only pick one. Um, and from the point you generate that invoice is when the timer ticks, essentially. And that's um, from initiation to the time you finish and pay that invoice. Um, we have a, a leaderboard. Um, which will display who paid their invoice the quickest, essentially. Um, some, let's go through some tips. So this first endpoint is gonna be what you're gonna to use to, to fund your address. So we have a faucet running that's gonna give you 100,000 Satoshis, I think. So you're, part of what you need to code in is to um, generate a Bitcoin address, which you're then gonna paste into that endpoint and it's gonna send you some sats, which you'll have to wait six confirmations for before you can open a channel. Yeah, we're on reg test for the setup, and I think it's mining every 15 seconds. So. Yeah. yeah, so there is, there is a bit of a wait there. Um, let me see some other tips. Um, you need to make sure that you have your wallet in sync as well when you receive new funds. 
um, we have some events happening at, and at, at the bottom. So when you open a channel, it will print to the console um, that you've initiated a new channel open and th th that it's pending confirmations, as well as when your channel is ready to use, at which point you can pay the invoice. Um, this is designed for you to kind of dive kind of head first and we're just going to come around and, and help you as, as and when. Um, do, is there any, any questions? You can get the documentation up uh, here as well. Um, yeah, so so if you are having any issues, you can read the docs and see what APIs are available. Yeah, so the primary abstraction is the, the node uh, struct. Um, so feel free to dive into these docs. Uh, they should be linked in GitHub. Yeah. And um, or on the Reddit. Yeah, or the Reddit. And what we'll do is like I don't know every ten minutes or so we'll come back and sort of complete one of the steps in this workshop. And yep. so if you're struggling a little bit, you kind of you know can just add that code in there and continue on to the next step. Yeah. So um, we have about ninety minutes, and yeah, like Jeff said, we're gonna just let you we're gonna let you loose, and then every ten minutes I will come back and fill in. A little bit of the tutorial as we go along. Is it is it clear what we're what we're doing? Yeah, thumbs up. I want to see some thumbs up. We're not we're doing. Any questions? Any questions at the minute? Yeah, we come through. All right, cool. All right, let's let's uh, let's. One, yeah. one possible concern. I don't know if it's happening for other people, but for yeah. me, I changed one line of code, and my rep is telling me there's not enough space. Okay, I'll we'll try to find someone that could help debug uh, that. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll be coming around and helping people. Well. So you've got myself, you've got Jeff, and you've got Eric sitting here at the front as well. Okay, cool. All right, let's go. Yeah, so Is there a link to the GitHub on the rep web anywhere? Oh, I saw it in your slides, but let's see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Cody may get you on there if you need to, but it's not really sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you want the GitHub, it's this one. Oh, yeah. Is there anyone else have a question? If not, I'll try to figure out what the rep problems are. Who had the problem with Rebel being uh, just? No, that no, was me. I'm going to do some string stalling cargo now, or I haven't already had it. So I had your. You're trying to do a Yeah, I'll just do it. What well, is Rebel showing you? It is showing it's like so. It's like right after I changed the single line. And so anytime I try and complete that page, then it's gone. I don't know. Is it a char? I forked it. So. Maybe that's it, like maybe the team has more experience than I do.
Gracias. Yeah, I don't know. 
don't want to do all that for you, but just. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, so it's, I believe for the fall of this rush test, um, so we can dig. So there, there's actually, maybe this is a little confusing from the example of the docs versus what's in here. Um, you have a builder where you can set You can also throw a little bit over time and dig. So you can go scroll down and you can see that one of the other structs, there's a little bit of builder. I guess. There's both yeah. menu and there's also uh, yeah. a yeah. Okay, so I think the reason is you need to at least dig to the fall of the Jesus Rush test. You might want to win the down in the bay so that it all time for the other system to the right side of the test. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think I think most of these fields you can set your own field might be all the other So that takes a network operator versus a function. So the builder might be a string that translates to that. So maybe it's easier to do more of that field. Or, well, I guess for for control, we can see all that kind of stuff. But it's sort of not matter. So <clears throat> the faucet, there's a, a URL that I believe is here on the GitHub of Rubber Gold, um, where it's, Okay, so for anyone who wants to uh, just follow along with me, I'm just going to do the first little bit of configuring the Explorer URL. Um, so I'll comment these lines up here. Um, oh, what is going on here? <laughs> My replica's got out of this way. <laughs> oh, so that was the same problem that we experienced earlier. Um, can you get the refresh or anything? Does it work? Okay, I'm gonna copy this again. This is I'm gonna do this hard. This is uh, my first one. Should I do it on the? Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's do one. At least see if it works. Okay. Um, let me. I'm having a repo issue, so I'm gonna see if I can do it on the same one. Uh, if not, I'll just probably do it locally as well. So we didn't even get it wrong. It seems like it's wrong. Yeah, that guy's like you That's it. And no one else is speaking. Yeah. 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 Okay, so for anyone who was uh, having a bit of issues setting up the, the config, um, so uh, our config object comes with a, a default method, 
Um, and uh, once we have a config, we have stuff like our receipt that will be Let me just uh, see if it can be a code completion. So on our uh, config, we have an explorer property. Will it give me code completion? Uh, I'm trying to see if it will give me code completion. Uh, there we go. Got it, there we go. Um, so we have an explorer. So there we go. That's what so we've got an explorer URL, server URL, which we need to set. So we hard coded that at the top for you guys already, which is just our explorer server URL. Um, and uh, then we need to basically start the node. Um, so let's I'll comment these out because I've kind of done that already. And then we basically just need to start our node. So we have an instance of uh, let's see. Uh, have we done our builder? No, okay. So we need to just delete the builder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. No. And then we need to build, we need an instance of our builder. Uh, so I don't know, let's do that. Let builder equal uh, just sort of the builder. As you can see, I'm not, I'm not a Rust developer, but. Mm -hmm. We'll go with the flow. Um, so our, our builder config um, has a method on it called from config, and then we just pass in the config that we created up here. And um, then let's create an instance of a node. So we can do something like let node equals um, builder dot build. Um, yeah, I think that's right. And then start our node. We just call node dot start. Some of you may have noticed from the docs that there's an alternative way to, to build a node. Uh, instead of using configuration, you could use, um, I guess it would be builder colon colon new and then set different, um, set different, properties. Set different properties on it. Um, the, one of the differences is that, um, I forget which one's which, but one of them, for instance, will take reg test or test net or whatever you were using as a string versus the other one taking it as like a network object. So there's some subtleties to the interface there. Um, but that might be something you, you might get tripped up over if you are looking at the docs uh, for the builder new versus uh, builder from config. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just two alternative ways to build. Uh, yeah, I was being lazy and just using the default one now. The default network should be branch test, so you don't have to set that. At some point, we'll probably change that once LPD node is, is in a better state. Um, and then if I just want to check that I actually have the node running, let's try and print something out. So, um, I don't know, like I'll print a node ID. Uh, how do you do, you've got a format instance. Uh, if you, if you do, um, code it on that. Yeah, I think just, if you just put it out. That I think. Yeah, I think it's not a good one. We, we need a passphrase to get out of inputs. You do. So that, those are on the table there, those uh, on the paper. Oh. This is part of the, sort of the game to see how fast you get to pay it. Um, so, yeah, once I've. What is that moaning about? Uh, I need to do an unwrap or something here, don't I? Uh, because I think I have to unwrap here or something. It looks like you might have to, yeah. What does unwrap do? So um, basically this node uh, dot start or the start method here, 
is returning a result. So a result in Rust can be either okay or error. Uh, an unwrap is essentially, you're saying, assume it's okay, just give me what's inside the okay tool. So that okay will contain the object that you're trying to get. In this case, um, actually, what is the, the start of the return? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the for that. Um, oh, and it, so it's empty, basically. So um, saying unwrap is, is basically a way of saying, I, I'm assuming this will, is actually gonna work for whatever reason and just give me what comes back. And but it will panic if there's an error. Exactly, so if there's error, it will panic. Um, so quick run through before I shut up again. So we've um, basically, we have some basic constants at the top, an explorer server URL, force it node ID, which has our lightning node, um, uh, node that public node ID hard coded in here and the force it address, which you're gonna use later to connect and open the channel. So we create our convict here, we set our Explorer URL and uh, we set up a builder to instantiate our node and then we start our node and then we print our own node ID to the console and when we run it, to see if it actually works. Well, if I have a channel open already and I kill LDK node and then I rerun it, will it Automatic will it, will it know to try to uh, reinitiate that channel connection with the peer, or do I have to specify that? I believe it will. I could double check for you though. Um, but don't open multiple <laughs> channels. Like once you initiate one channel open request, probably comment out the code. So the oh, next time, yeah, you're, you're, you're running it over and over here. Yeah, you're gonna you're yeah, gonna yeah. send multiple. So just try and do that once if you can. It's a bit yeah. tricky with this setup. But, gotcha. but um, in any event, yeah, I've printed my node ID at the bottom to the console there. So if anyone's having a few issues starting, that's uh, one one way to get set up. I'll come back in another five minutes and do the whole funding dance. And if anyone had trouble getting to that point and still needs a little help, let me know. Every time we do cargo run, is it like creating a new node or it's like is this Yeah, so if you do cargo run it's gonna be actually executing the code. Again, it's not creating a new node. Uh yeah, I think uh not storing anything in there, right? I'm not sure if the node ID is gonna change it. Is is the node ID uh, uh, saved in the directory somewhere? It might be I think it's saved in the file yeah, yeah. system. Yeah, so I, I believe it, it's not creating a new one, it'll use the same Yeah, it'll automatically expire as soon as Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's kind of part of the goal of LDK node versus just straight up LDK is you don't have to worry about a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So like protecting the channels also should be Yeah, so if you want to check that, just every time you want to check your node ID, it's, it's deriving the same uh, public key for your node ID. Okay. <laughs> You want to use my character? Uh, yeah. If you are familiar with Rust, you, you can always look at the source code for LDK node as well. Uh, so it's under, well, if you do it from the docs directly, there's links to source on those. But also, um, Fighting Dev Kit is the GitHub uh, organization, and it should be LDK node listed towards the bottom. Essentially, you know, just a kind of layer. And so, 
Okay, there currently is some direct use of that as a box or a running person. Um, so we have one on us. The rest of the time, so I just want to ask. So you Because I look correct in this one. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's a red thing. Let me let me try and do it now. Let's see. Um, so if anyone wants to listen in to the next bit, I'm gonna create a funding address and then try and uh, fund it and sync the wallet. So let's see how we go. Um, so let's create a funding address. And um, I think what do we do? Is it node or uh, forget the function now? It's new node dot new funding address. Yep. And then uh, it returns the result, so we need to unwrap it. Which part are we doing that, Connor? Uh, we're just going to fund the address using yeah. the force Because gotcha. well, a few people are saying that they've. Um, it used to force it to find address, but the balance is still showing a zero, so I don't know if I force it. Okay. Messed up. So let's try it live and see what happens. Yeah. Let's try it live and see what happens. Um, so there I have a funding address, and I'm going to try and print it to the console so I can use it as, so I can copy and paste it into the endpoint of our force it. So uh, print line is very awkward in a Rust, but let's do address and. Uh, Funding address and uh, something like that. Uh, I'm going to run it again just so it can print the address for me. All right, so right at the bottom here, I've got address and it's it's a um, Create a vex rate to address for me. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to head over to uh, our force it. I'm going to I'm going to use the get sats endpoint and copy and paste the Bitcoin address. Um, it's working. But before I do that, let me um let me, let me create a sleep. So I'm going to have to wait the six confirmations for it. So I'm going to do that for now. Um, 
Let's see what the best way to do that. Uh, okay. So this is yeah. no So the reason for to sync sync wallets is because you have both a on-chain wallet and a lightning wallet. Um, and when we find the address, we're gonna just wait for six confirmations. So the faucet is currently set to mine blocks every 15 seconds. So 15 times six will wait and uh, let's uh, print the balance as well. So balance. No, I'm sorry. And our node has an on chain, on chain balance method. Cool. So we quickly run through that. So basically, I've just generated a funding address and printed it so I can copy it over to the endpoint. And then I'm going to sync the wallet and print the balance. So initially, I think once I do this, the balance should be zero, but once I wait the 90 seconds or whatever it is for the six confirmations and run it again, I should have a balance of 100,000 100, Satoshis. So uh, where's my console one? Uh, I need to do it unwrap again, I guess. So this is just going to print my balance, uh, my address for me again. One second. That's a little, little bit slow. So we're calling get sats forward slash my Bitcoin address I just generated. And you should receive an OK message with the tran transaction ID. And then if you head back to the replit, um, I've got a balance, an untrusted. So uh, this, uh, uh, what is it? On-chain balance method returns an object with immature, trusted pending, untrusted pending, and confirmed. Untrusted pending just means it hasn't had the six confirmations yet. Um, so just, just wait 90 seconds and run it again and we should have confirmed to be 100,000 Satoshis. So if anyone's not got that bit done there, there you go. There's a few of you that look like you have it correct so I'm not quite sure why it's not funded for you yet but let's see if it works for me. Perfect. Yeah, so you're, you're good. So now you need to go, what you have to do, so yeah, you're, you're good. So you've got your funding address. So what you're going to do is you're going to check the team all the node docs here for a faucet that says this endpoint will give you sats. So you go to the URL on this page, you need to append get sats onto that, and then you need to take the Bitcoin address for your console output, put it in there, and hit that endpoint. Wait about 15 seconds. Is it still up? Uh, Yep. So it'll run in 15 seconds or so, and then you might need to rerun the thing so it actually shows up and checks the balance again. Yes. I don't think it does. Alright, so I need to Yeah, 
Okay, let me try and run it and see if uh, the six confirmations work for me. Okay, so I've got a balance, uh, it seems to work for me. I've got a balance of uh, 100,000 satoshis now, so I'm ready to kind of start opening channels. Has anyone managed to get to that point where they, they have a balance of confirmed balance? I've got a confirmed balance, I'm about to move on to my channel. So, so who, who's able to get a confirmed balance of 100,000 satoshis? Just, just three people. Jordan, did you manage to get? Okay, one second. They release the hands, raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, do you want to help this channel here actually? Because he's getting a transition to channel to flow with this message. So, I think I'll also do that. Well, I think I'm going to have some sensor around the address of the docs. It says, um, uh, it says, says LDK dash I think. Oh, I see it's No, no, it's a zero two. It's the pub I don't know. You're you're giving us some stuff. Yeah, he's not seeing so. So which is called Yeah, 
guess I never saw it. Sure, I just yeah, we tried to make that. Uh, 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 Basically, the faucet has like the issue invoice on the Are you with the faucet? So, I don't know. 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 I don't Okay, the channels are open. Okay, I guess. Okay. 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 Okay.
Right, thanks. If anyone wants to watch me. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this. Let's see. Um, all right. So we have uh, open channel to our node. Um, okay. So we have on our node object, we have node dot connect open channel. And if we look at what it takes, uh, Replit was kind enough to fill in most of it for me. But if well, the first parameter is uh, the faucet node ID, so that is the lightning node I want to connect to, and we have a reference to it at the top of this file called faucet node ID, so we can just copy and paste that. Um, then we want to, uh, so faucet address is the see here so we've got faucet node ID um, we've got the address of the the IP address not the not the on chain not the Bitcoin or on chain address or anything like that IP address of the node we want to connect to which is our faucet uh, we have a channel amount in Satoshi's I think uh, if he wasn't greedy like Jodeman and spam the faucet, you should only have 100,000 Satoshi, so I don't know, I'm going to fund it with 50,000, let's say, uh, 50, 50. Um, I'm going to push to counterparty, I'm going to leave that none, I think I can say in Ross, um, and announce the channel, I'll just set it to true to make it public knowledge, and I'm going to finish it with a semicolon. Let's see, and that returns the result as well, so I have to unwrap. Um, cool. I don't know if I need to, do I need to sleep a bit here as well? So the, you'll get the events, assuming you have yeah. not opened the channel yet. Yeah. So you can have it voice there. Do the lightning invoices have a timeout? A short timeout, or is it? Uh, lightning invoices can have a timeout. But the default is two hours. Um, if or absolutely, if, you, if, if none is given in the invoice, the default is two hours. And not a block time. No, no, no absolutely, absolute time. Um, but I'm not sure what we have our set to do, but it probably has a long. Okay. Um, and while that channel is being confirmed, this wait. I'm just going to wait like, like ninety seconds or something. But I do have this thing called. So I didn't talk about it in too much detail here, but we have this idea of um, events. So um, throughout the life cycle of different flows, LDK and LDK node trigger different events. So when I call connect open channel, um, there's a channel pendant event that will be triggered that will return the channel ID as well as the counterparty's node ID or an error if one occurs. And we've, we've kind of coded that for you already, so you don't have to do that, but that will give you an indication on the state of where your channel is at. So I want to get the console so you can see here. I'm going to comment out a few things so it's a bit less noisy. I'm going to comment out, uh, uh, I don't need a funding address anymore because I've done that. And uh, I'll leave the sync in. Um, I'll get rid of the balance because I know I've got 105 Satoshis and just give it a run. So, let's see. Um, I'll be waiting for a channel pending ready event after, how long did I set it? 90 seconds? Yeah, we'll I don't think I actually need to do that, do I? No, you don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Then it'll just look at it when, uh, like that next event is, is blocking. Yeah. So once it, the event comes up, okay. you'll proceed it. So I'm just going to wait for this channel pending ready event. There we go. Yep, so here I've got this new channel with 
our faucet node and uh, it's just saying pending at the moment. So is the, is the faucet node, uh, you know, a lightning? Yes. Yeah, it's yes. not a retainer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has right. both. It has unchained. Yeah. 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 Um, and I believe actually the, the back end for the same one that, that you're going to be is it's the same as far as server. So it's kind of part of the same thing. Like, because it's, it's right test and it's yeah, that part of one, one uh, right test node. Has anyone generated a channel pending Event, yep. Okay, the invoice. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, what was the leaderboard? Are you first or? Yeah, this no, check. I'm like down on oh, there. There's like a bunch of people up there. Dang, is that? Is that? No one shouted, no one screamed. The <laughs> Voke icon tomorrow got in 24 seconds. That's so much. Is that my repeated password? Because it's a payment hash. I got it. Non unique payment hash. Yeah. Okay. Steven, what one were you? you I'm, I'm often soft plus. Okay, cool. So we have to see at this table if you need. Well, they're, they're all unique. Yeah, they're all unique. We yeah. need yeah. to yeah. get most of the ones. We're talking about like specific here. Yeah. Someone um, may have used one of those. I'm not sure which one. Cool. Oh, so um, what did I just do? I did a uh, channel pending. Uh, I'm just waiting for my channel to be ready before I can pay the, the last step to pay the invoice. How do you find it then? It's pretty easy. Yeah. Once you not have to wire. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of rust that you see could see, but learning about just basically the graphics of everything. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like with the amount of time we have to use on RAD, it's like a very different we have to be I want also React Native bindings. It's not hard. How did that come up? We got the same area you did. You don't need to get it Oh, just try a just try and do it possibly. Is, is there like a um, log so you can see yeah, where I can see more yeah, information about yes, why you should it see it occur? Um, yeah, I'm going to try to help you with that in a sec. I think for the yeah, next way, so I can't do it anymore. I, but not last time, but the first time, time like, so like twice. Yeah, it was kind of like having a channel. So you might have hanged out. Channel confirmed like an array of bullshit. So maybe it's a bit ready to be used. I mean, this is a great deal. I've been talking to voice from the screen. I mean, I don't know. You're going to have some shit. It's fine. I don't know. Well, you didn't pay it. I want to say. Four seconds. Don't open the next one. No, 24 seconds was the first person who got it. It was on time, they paid it in from the first generation. If you want to see the details, you can do it. 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 Do you have a form of rent off in case it like pops up? I don't know why. Yeah, that will invoice variable you have. It starts on the package. But I need to be invoiced. How do you think the invoice is going to come? Is there a response as to that? Yeah. Also, another thing I noticed was um, because when I, because I had stopped it at one yeah. point, restarted it, so I had to comment oh, okay. and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. Because I was, was trying to open the same channel again without. So maybe the only ones you're saying is not showing up there. Because I, I mean, I probably that would be too. Like it is continually open channels. Well, no, it's not. It, it, it can't can, unless you're running out. Well, it depends if you have enough funds. No, it's okay. What I did is I got a hundred, I got a million satellites from the phone so that I can use out of the five hundred pin channel and then had to pay you the fees. So kind of not on, I'm able to yeah, touch was, uh, more channels. Well, I don't know the code I have. Well, I don't know the code I have. 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 I mean, this is the right though. Yeah. Yep, lit invoice, invoice from stream. Just give them a minute to build. Yeah, I'm not sure there. Um, given this keeps running like that, right? Let me check this. Well, I mean, actually, I probably didn't pay because now it's down. So, you know, thank you. Well, no, you're saying you just want to open up here. This is what you're talking about. You have to go to the homepage of the homepage. 
and yeah, then, and then you see there's an endpoint so that gets there. Yeah, or the so there. Yeah. Something goes on. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure if that stuff happens like asynchronously or like the weights have to be complete, you know? Because there's that one line there and it's like waiting for the channel to be ready. So it might be stuck on that one point. I didn't put the I just put the code in the comments. I know, but what I'm saying is that you start a channel with something, you opening a new channel again, it might be stuck. I'm not saying it's never going to pass that point. I'm not saying it isn't wrong. I'm just saying yeah, it's not it's asynchronous. It's going to be stuck yeah, on that one thing. Yeah. Waiting for the channel to go there. So it can't be yeah. So it can't play this until it gets past that point. Yeah. So. But there you go. Yeah. I know. It was just up there. Yeah. Nice. And since you can just do 100,000 for the board. Is that one? Essentially, Yeah, so it just depends on the use case. If you really want to make some sense, it's like full control. You know, you would use regular right all the same. So if you just want to get on the right quickly, like, you, your, your needs aren't so much. You probably need to do um, their own kind of thing because they're having to like, they're, they're bullying the same thing. You know, you know, Maybe I'll be on. 
maybe you know, yeah. like yeah, you know, special yeah. stuff yeah. Fit just as much uh, animals. Um, maybe uh, other uh, mechanics. I've got some points on the other services. Alright, I'm going to try and see if my channel uh, eventually opens to the tomorrow. So I'm going to comment out the pending channel event because that was successful. Uh, comment out this time out as well. Oh yeah, sorry. Yep. And like swap this and say add for them. Next time is yep. to suggest to add panics yep. when you want yep. just the code to stop yep. right when you're getting the code rather than like kind of running the swaps. Yeah, good job. Yes, the terminal. Right. Right. So the, the keys would be cached and like the file system in your computer. Uh, so in this case, you're working on Redwood, so it's stored on Redwood. Which is a mindset here. Because it's like, because it's like in the browser. Yeah, it's, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's, not, it's not cached in the browser. It's, it's a server. It's not so you are. Yeah. So, uh, it's kind of weird. So then I can restart the application, right? Mm -hmm. So, the channel is already open. Mm -hmm. And the restart application is mm -hmm. exactly the same. It automatically will connect to it. Yeah. Yeah. It really yeah. takes some test. Yep. It takes like another bottle of one where it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm going to 
stop in about 10 minutes. Um, I'm just trying to finish up here, see if I can pay. Uh, we do have a little survey we'd, we'd like you to fill out just quickly, just to get some feedback. Um, so we've got a couple of people who just want to see the back Time banana. Sorry, it's in the gym, the guy in the bottom. MOS. A reference to our invoice and dot com right. And I think that's it. I need to probably wait a I had a few issues getting the channel ready, it went to fire as well. So let's see if it actually pay an invoice there. when I was doing is it like it seems like it gets stuck on no, 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 like, sort of is it is that not asynchronous so that that block that blocks um, the workshop is just, just yeah yeah it's kind of made um, I guess one possibility is like you've already received the event in the prior run the yeah channel's already open um, so you may want to just skip that for yeah, skip it yeah yeah, yeah. But usually, make sure you expect the next event, and then yeah, it's the good. channel closes, and then whatever. Yeah, you have the same. Was that channel ready or pending? That was ready. Okay, yeah. yeah. I had to uncomment out all the channel related stuff for mine to work. Yeah. Like after I opened yeah. the channel, I it's a bit, it's a bit awkward right for for this. But I don't, I don't know what else, what other way you can do. Maybe just panic instead. Mm -hmm. like, oh, um, I mean, I wouldn't even use the events okay. there. It's just like normally, normally yeah, you just need to call each the done. Yeah, well, it's the hang right now. So you just you don't have to throw those out to your. No, so, so typically, basically, is like you wouldn't be expecting a certain type of event. You would just have like a, a task that processes events. Mm -hmm. And so for this tutorial, if you, once you create the channel, you're, you're not going to be able to see those events again once they're cleared out. So you just don't want to do it again. It's just kind of an awkwardness of how you have knowledge or the, the, the workshop. And this will be, um, so all of the everything goes into the talking about uh, Yeah, months. I think once you have it, we were hoping you could try to use the event code a bit on this just to show you, but yeah, yeah. it's it makes it a little bit It's just like a one as an office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it should, you know, it should guide the work. It should be able to work as much even as you want to. I can. So the idea is that the channel is already created, so you won't receive those events again. So you're already in the channel. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So uh, what I did was I did the, 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 yeah. So, so basically, um, yes. Okay. And then I passed in Boston. The events, the variance, a lot of the declare for us at the top of the bottom. Typically, you'd have someone pass the constant events. So that's the ID experiment, right? But what you want in this case is that I'm going to, I want to open a chain. It's other nodes. So I need to do this other nodes. So if you already opened the channel, you have to do whatever amount of the channel would be. Yeah, the loss of gain would be the size of the size. So I made a 500,000. You should make it, you should make the channel even smaller than the amount of the All right, can people, um, can people do me a favor and just everyone come down just a little bit so we can just uh, have a little debrief. Just come down, please. That, that may be something where, or just go down. Maybe, I'm not sure the exact scenario is just sex is showing, but it could just be that we had the previous executions. No, I'm sure it's something wrong. And so that event's still hanging around there. So I would call that, uh, I think it's like that handle method. I might have called it sometimes. sometimes. I would just uh, figure it out. Yeah, figure it out. Or just announce it. Or just announce it. Okay. Yeah. Someone's already paid to sync up the dollar and all that. 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 Can people, people come down? Just come, come down a little bit closer, please. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up a little, little bit earlier. Um, I need to uh, No, I, I need to pay another invoice for that one. Yes, sir. I gave one the cheese, so I paid more. It's a box you yeah. wanted to be an offline uh, picking up the uh, rotor. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of more expect here, right? Uh, you know, that, that should just be all through the organization. Oh, you're on the same command? Yeah. I just want to open the code. I think the Kyle channel wasn't I never received the channel ready Yeah, you might want to try to reopen it. Alright, um so who who was able to actually pay invoice in here? Uh, we got a couple. So we've got a couple. This stark difference to the last one we did. Everyone everyone was yeah. able to pay one. Wait, so. I mean there was like five people on the thing. Well, we maybe it some, some of them were maybe like me testing this morning though, so. No, I, I cleared it before, so. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, because a few people have left already. Um, but in general, like, uh, bar like just some, I guess, networking issues and stuff like that, what, what do you guys think about the API? Is it something that you can see yourself using in the future? Is it something you're excited to use in the future? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I want to use it um, just from my perspective. Uh, is there a JavaScript? Um, any way I can use this with JavaScript? Uh, I think eventually the bindings. I'm not sure what bindings will spawn be. Um, is it on the slides? I forget if it's separate. Uh, so we, on the slides, we have Kotlin, Swift, Flutter, and uh, Python. Okay. Uh, we, if you have Elias, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I, would think, I would ping him and see what the timeline is for Spark. Um, uh, okay, awesome. You might have some, there might be some issues on the on the GitHub repository of saying what's down the pipeline. He has a big, I can, actually, I'll point it to you online. Okay, and do, do me a favor. Um, we do have a little survey in the, where did I put it in the GitHub? In the README, did I put it? Yeah, so at the bottom of the README, there's a, there's just a quick Google Doc that, if you would be so kind to just fill in very quickly just to give us a bit of feedback how we can make this a bit more it's a bit better it's the first time we have used replit as well um the previous workshop we just got everyone to just do it on their local machines and everything run seemed to run quite smoothly um, so this is our first time using replit so where'd you post that link in the telegram or where was that, that uh, it's in the readme in the replit oh, okay. um, let me know if you have any issues accessing it. 
They're going to show the code for uh, boxing and page Yeah, I'll show you the code. It doesn't want to work for me. It's but... pretty sports, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so the, yeah, the code for just part, uh, paying an invoice is pretty simple as well. You just use this um, invoice uh, from string method, paste in your uniquely generated invoice based on your passphrase, and then your node has a send payment method, which you can pass in the reference to the invoice that returns a result and it triggers an event called payment successful. Okay. Um, which some of you would have got, some of you might have got errors like uh, payment hash not unique or just payment fail and various other errors. Um, but yeah, thank you for taking part. Any, any questions just about in general about LDK No, like forward, um, what was happening going forward? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. Um, so start using it. Uh, maybe like one suggestion for the tutorial is yep. just have more comments describing uh, like the context in which the LDK is actually being utilized for calls. Okay. Like, like that's something I'm trying to kind of understand. It's like like, oh, it's, like which modules are using context. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. We should probably figure out a way to get rid of the next command. Like if we're going to be blocking and synchronous, yeah. it's uh, you know it, it doesn't send a notification unless the next channel you're supposed to call. So, you know, if we had an option of either having asynchronous methods or synchronous methods, then you know we could um, say you know for an asynchronous workflow you, you want to handle it yourself, but for the synchronous, just just do it and handle it more carefully, such that you know if no event is going to come, you you know a priori that you're not supposed to be expecting it and blocking. So that is some magic. Sorry, Jordan, did you have one? Oh yeah, I was so um, I was particularly looking for one of the reasons from the top of this like I just like how many people subscribe to show services. Subscribe to HLC? Yes. Okay. Uh so it can be real big the I like the way that that was supposed to be fine. I think we sort of uh, hide a lot of that already. Yeah, there are a lot of details of lighting away yeah. from the top video. Uh, so yeah, you probably won't see that. Yeah. Do these? Do yeah. you have some of that? Yeah, the LDK under the you'll see some of that. Of course. Uh, are you interested in HTLC? Is that it? Like you can go like three of them. Not just two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one is definitely more geared towards a mobile use case where you might be that user. But for the server edition, that might be something that we want to see. So that's good for feedback. Is everyone filled in the server? Please. Sorry, what you said? Have everyone filled in the survey? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, all right, well, thanks. So, for, go. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Did you have a question? Or? Yeah, I'll ask you after. Okay. All right, thanks everyone. Good job. Good job.